Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is a talking drone. Well, no, this is actually the Gepard C Mark V. Remember the Mark V? I reviewed the Mark V before. This is the previous one. It has a DJI FPV air unit in it, and it's extremely good. This is the brand new one on the market and has the DJI 03 system in it. So what does that mean? That means it can record video now at 4K 60 frames per second and you have no need for a camera up top. For this video, I did fly it and put a camera up top because I wanted to see how it flies with the extra weight and if it's as good as a camera like the GoPro 11 mini that I have here. And I can tell you, it's pretty darn good. It's pretty much as good as the GoPro 11 mini. So you don't have to spend big bucks on this camera. So let me tell you about this beautiful drone. Well, it's a five inch drone. It falls in the five inch category because the props are five inch. It's an X frame. Do you know what an X frame is? An X frame means it's outstanding at freestyle. And this is really good for freestyle if that's what you want to do. Now, just like with the previous Mark V, which was very popular and they used to sell out of these things, they put that beautiful piece of aluminum up front to protect the camera and everything. And it exists on the new version as well. So your camera is well protected because the DJI 03 camera and system and recording system is very expensive. So you want to protect that. First thing I noticed from flying the previous version and the new version is the new version seems to be a lot more well tuned. This was tuned what I would call awesome tuning. And this one is like even more awesome this. And that difference might come down to the gyroscope that's in this one. It's more enhanced than the previous model. Also the flight controller, I believe is more enhanced than the previous model as well. The new model also has Bluetooth. I'll show you that in this video. So you don't have to hook this up to beta flight if you're out in the field and you wanna make changes to your settings, you can do it right on your phone. Looking at the motors on the previous model and the new model, they are both 2107.5 motors they look to be the same dimensions they're both 1960 kv so the motors appear to be the same this is a 6s drone i think you can get it in 4s but mine is a 6s version and if i didn't already mention it since it has the dji 03 system in it yes it records at 4k 60 frames per second which is awesome with stability just like you had a camera gimbal on this thing it looks really good also that gives you a range with this little antenna you could get up to 10 kilometers but you'll never get 10 kilometers because the battery you put on top would run out of power before you ever got up to 10 kilometers fpv drones are not really designed to go super super far they're more for massive power instantly and let you do all sorts of flips and rolls and twirls and go in and out and through things and all that other good stuff and this one is designed exactly for that now i've flown this drone multiple times uh many times with the camera up top and many times without the camera up top and i'd say on average i was getting like five minutes of flight time never less than five minutes but easily five minutes and a little bit higher i was only using batteries like this this is a 6s it's only 10 50 milliamps hours it's not very big that that would be considered a small battery if you fly with something larger like a 1300 or a 1500 then you'd get more flight time now the mark 5 does come in two different colors you have the emerald green which i have here and you also have a coral orange color i really like the green so if i had to recommend one get the green one it's really nice a lot of people commented how cool it looks now i'm going to show you a segment of video just in case you're new to the fpv hobby and you think well i'm gonna buy this drone because it's got the DJI 03 system in it. I can record at 4K 60. I'm going to make Steven Spielberg movies. It's going to be awesome. Please note, this is an X frame. X frames are made for freestyle and all X frames will show the props in the frame. So these props up front are very close to the camera. And when you stick this DJI 03 camera on ultra wide, which is 155 degrees, the props are in the frame. If you put the camera on wide, which is a little bit less, the props are in the frame. If you set the camera to normal or linear, then the props are not so much in the frame. There's a way to get around that, and that is you can crop in your video in post editing, or you use clear colored props. You'll see the green ones, you can see the green, but if these were clear, you might not see them as much unless you got light reflections. And of course, the other option is to just put an external camera on the top, like I have this 11 black mini, and you'll see there's no props in the frame for the mini, because if you take a look, look where the camera's pointing. It's way up there, the props are down there. It's never gonna get the props in the frame. So that's pretty much the workaround. This is just to tell you that you're gonna get props in the frame if you only fly with the DJI O3 system unless you crop it or use clear colored props. Let me show you what I mean here, watch this. In this example, I've set both cameras to ultra wide field of view. First up, we have the DJI O3 camera system and you can see the props in the frame when I set it to ultra wide. 
Next we have the GoPro 11 mini and it is also set to ultra wide but because it sits so high up on the drone, no props are in the frame. And here we have a side by side comparison of both cameras set to ultra wide field of view. You can see the differences, props in the frame versus no props in the frame. You can also see how good the DJI O3 camera is. Certainly it doesn't have the dynamic range of the GoPro Hero 11 mini but it's certainly pretty good. For this next example I've set both cameras to wide field of view. Starting with the DJI O3 system, you can see again the props are still in the frame but not as bad. And when we switch over to the GoPro Hero 11 mini, which is also set to wide, you can see no props in the frame. And finally when we do the side by side comparison, you can see the images are both of high quality. Once again the GoPro Hero 11 mini has more dynamic range than the DJI O3 system, but honestly the DJI O3 system looks pretty darn good. Now with all FPV drones that are really good, what I like to do is a hover test. The hover test is just to test out how good the internal flight controller is. If it's really good, then I should be able to hover this and just keep it like sitting on a dime. It should be easy. So I did the hover test and well, here it is. Now it's time for the hover test. This is a test I do with all FPV drones. I wanna see how good they hover. In other words, I'm gonna put the drone in angle mode, take off, and it has to hold still in the air with very minimal input from me. The better the flight controller in a drone, the better it hovers in place. Now, I know a lot of people are probably gonna put a camera on drones, even though the camera up front is really, really good with this O3 system from DJI. So for that reason, in this hover test, I'm gonna leave my little uh, GoPro 11 mini on it. It's got a bit of weight, it's over 100 grabs. So I'm gonna leave that on the front and hover it here and let's see if it can balance all this weight with the big battery on the back as well. And it should do quite well here. It's a close up if you wanna see what it looks like with everything. Big battery on the back and the mini up front. And uh, yeah, it should uh, hover quite well. At least I'm hoping so, so let's try it out now. All right, so I've got the DJI Mini 3 Pro right there and I have our little GEPRC Mark V down here, and I'm gonna take it up for a hover right now. Hopefully this little mini drone is gonna keep rotating around me and not crash into anything because these drones are not good with a point of interest or any sort of avoidance on it, even though there's no avoidance working right now when there's sun low in the horizon, which there is now. So when it comes around and it sees the sun and me, it gets a little bit confused. Oh, and one last thing I should say, in beta flight, I've programmed this so that when I touch this button here that says start, stop, the motors will arm. And also I could control the modes with the little switch on the left. You know, the normal, the sport, the manual. I've got mine set to angle, horizon, and acro mode. I hit the button, we're gonna go up. Hover mode with all the weight of the, oh, look at that, look at that. That is gorgeous. Look at that with all the weight I have on it. That's nothing. That is an awesome drone. That is really well tuned. Okay, I think people will have a lot of fun with this. That's for sure. Here, let me, where's my little Mini 3? I'll bring it over to the Mini 3. Where are you, Mini 3? I can hear you, but I can't see you because the sun's in my eyes. Now that I see sunspots, I'll try to keep it over here, come up to the Mini 3 without crashing into the Mini 3. There we go. That's pretty close. Let's bring it back here and put it over here. All right, I'll take this for a flight now. Now I flew the Mark V over the course of several days outside in very cold weather with a lot of wind and it's a champ. It did really well. As a matter of fact, I have a lot of flight footage which I'll show you. I also let Jedi Steve take it for a flight and I chased him around with another drone just so I could film this one. You'll Anytime you see external shots of this, I'm just chasing it and filming it with another drone. I did get Jedi Steve's opinion on what he thought about it. So I'll show you some flight footage and then I'll let you see what Jedi Steve thought about this. So watch this. First up, a flight over my partially frozen river on a very cold day. The first thing I noticed while flying the Mark V is that it is very well tuned, which means that you do not have to move your joysticks an awful lot if you want to keep the drone flying in a straight course or even taking a nice corner. I also noticed that the cold weather had utterly no effect on the performance of the drone. In addition, the winds that were blowing were not even noticeable. As a matter of fact, the Canada geese that were peacefully enjoying a nice leisurely morning were not even bothered when I flew over top of them. Here is a good example of the dynamic range of the GoPro Hero 11 Mini. Check out the clouds. Now I'm going to switch over to the DJI O3 and you see a lot of that definition in the clouds disappears. But for the price, that DJI O3 unit is pretty darn good. Now if I had to classify the Mark V in a category of FPV drones, I would put it in the graceful category. In other words, for a freestyle FPV drone, it's very graceful in its movements. Nothing is jerky, everything is very smooth. So now I'm gonna bring the drone down and I'm gonna let Jedi Steve take it for a flight and give us his thoughts. 
So on a very cold December day, Jedi Steve, freezing to death, has taken it for a flight and I'm chasing him with a DJI FPV drone and let me tell you, I chase planes, I chase RC cars, I chase everything and it takes years of practice to get good. Chasing an FPV drone is extremely difficult, but I was fortunate enough to get a little bit of not so bad footage. Now at this point I gave up chasing the Mark V and I came in for a landing and as I was doing so I caught Steve rotating the Mark V around us so I'm showing you the point of view from his camera here as well as the point of view from my drone the DJI FPV on the ground as he's buzzing us. He's going to zoom across a few times and then he's going to take this out and keep on enjoying the flight until the battery runs out. Six minutes later, he brings it in for a landing. Let's get his thoughts on what he thought. So Steve took the Mark V for a flight and, uh, you know, I asked him what he thought of it. He says he loved it. I'm yes. putting words into your mouth, am yeah, I? You are, but they, they, that's, you <laughs> quoted me, right? It's yeah. very, very nice, very smooth. So very I thought I'd smooth. grab the camera and get yep. him to actually tell you what he thinks about it. Yep. It's really cold out here today and he <laughs> flew it, so he's a champ. All right, Steve, go ahead. Tell, tell the audience what you think of this thing. Very smooth, very predictable. Uh, of course, all these models have lots of power, so power is not lacking, but super smooth, even if it's... It's good wind today, so didn't feel the winds at all. So it's very nice, very nice. And I like the color too as a bonus. So Yeah, the, the <laughs> emerald green is really nice. Yeah, it's very now, nice. It looks very good. I'm just going to add my little thought in here. I find nowadays, uh, Steve and I were just talking about this, almost every FPV drone you buy is good. You you can't buy a crappy FPV no. drone. Not, not, not with the technology anyway, today, no. Yeah. However, there's some FPV drones on the market, you know, like iFlight and GepRC, this one here with the Mark V and iFlight with their Nazgul Evoc, and the wind is blowing this all over the place, which are, they're good, but they're excellent. They're, they're a higher tier, like they're like DJI quality, the best of the best. And so An extra layer of smoothness. Yeah, and, yeah like yeah. The, the flight controllers, everything about them is just so good. So you pay more for these, yep. you get more, if you're a real pro into the FPV community, you will appreciate it. If you're a newbie starting off, you probably can't tell you might the difference. Not notice as <laughs> yeah. much, but yeah. You wouldn't notice the difference between yeah. this or one that only costs like a hundred bucks. So yep. yeah, that's about it. Yep. But I'm freezing right now, Steve. So, so I, am I. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop talking. Now I did mention that this does have Bluetooth, and you can use the SpeedyB app to connect to it. So let me just show you right here. I'll just plug it in. Powered on. It's all good. It's sending out a video signal, transmission, everything. I don't have a controller hooked up. I don't have anything else hooked up on my phone. I have a SpeedyB app. It says found GepRC. F7 and I'm going to say connect to it connecting to the GEPRC F7 flight controller hopefully my screen is recording and I can show you you should see on my screen as I move this I'm probably showing you the video right here you can see that my drone is moving around on the screen as well and on the left hand side are all my modes and stuff so I go to this one this is my modes this is where I set up my arm switch auxiliary 4 auxiliary 1 horizon mode angle mode and I've even got a beeper in down here and a few other things you can set everything there uh, you also have your receiver and your controller. I don't have it hooked up, so it's not going to work. But if everything was there, you can change settings in this app. So that's pretty cool. Next thing I want to show you is what comes in the box when you buy this baby. So check this out. This is the box your Mark V comes in, and this is the configuration of the Mark V I used in this video review. Opening the box, you'll find your Mark V. All the accessories are located below the Mark V. The Mark V is very well constructed and feels extremely solid in the hands. You'll find many skid plates all over the bottom of this quad just to protect the carbon fiber. And speaking of the carbon fiber, it's nice and thick so that in the event of a crash, you should have no damage. The very expensive DJI O3 camera is included and it is housed behind some nice aircraft aluminum for 100% protection. And the brains behind the air unit is housed in an area that allows for a heat sink so that it stays cool. Also, you can place a micro SD card in this unit to record your high quality video. The flight controller is left to the open environment to cool and also is set on vibration dampener so you should have no issues there. My unit did not come with a receiver so all my video and my telemetry goes through this antenna. The battery connector is an XT60. For accessories, you receive two sets of props. One goes on your quad and the other are spares. You also receive three battery straps just in case one or more break. The same is true for the battery grip. You get one spare one. Two external camera mounts are included, one for a large camera and one for a small camera. You get a pile of replacement screws and some tools. 
If you have a receiver in your quad, antenna protectors are included. There is some documentation included, such as the prop direction card, the flight controller schematic booklet, a quick start guide for newbies, product support cards, GEPRC stickers, and a GEPRC keychain. First thing you'll want to do is tear off the back of the battery grip and then place the battery grip on the top of the drone as such. Next take a battery strap, pass it through the drone as I'm showing here, and then velcro it all in place. And finally to install your props, take a look at the prop direction card. Also take a look at each prop. Each prop has writing on the top that has to face up. Match up the direction of the props with the direction on the card. And then secure each prop in place with a prop nut after you have all four props on the drone. Well, it should look like this. Total takeoff weight of the drone is 410 grams. Adding a large battery is 620 grams. So you're back to me and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Well, you kind of know my final thoughts already. I love this thing. You know, I probably sound like a guy that loves everything that I review, but you may not know this. I'm pretty much the only reviewer on YouTube that I get to pick everything I review. So... If you see something that's crap on my channel, that means I picked it and I made a mistake. So I don't pick crap. I only pick the good things. So this one, if I had to sum up the Gep RC Mark V, I would sum it up with one word. I would say it's refined. When I fly this, it is so smooth. I always love drones that are smooth, but this one here, it's like, you know, I can go have a nap and let this thing fly itself. It is just a, a beautiful flyer. And all the video segments you saw of this thing flying, those were all shot on windy days. So a lot of times drones on windy days, you'll get some bouncing around and stuff like that. But this is super smooth. It just cuts through everything. And it never feels like you're flying fast. You're flying fast, but on here it's so smooth that it's like, ah, oh, you're just gliding through the air. And then when you look and see how fast you're going, you're going, hmm, I guess I'm, I'm really hauling some butt there. But it doesn't suck up a lot of battery power either for what it is. So in every respect, I think it's a really good drone. And because of that, I'm going to put the links below where you can go check it out and see if it's for you. It does come in different configurations. When you get to the configurations, just select a configuration that works for you. And you'll see the price for the configuration you selected. So for me, I already showed you in the unboxing what the configuration is of the drone I have here. There was no receiver in it, so I had to use the DJI FPV remote control. And uh, I didn't really complain about the DJI FPV remote control with this drone. It seemed like they were a nice match. I don't know why. When I did the iFlight one, it didn't seem like they were a nice match. But on this one... Seemed like it was a really good match with that controller. And with all that said, I say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And if you have questions on this product, the Mark V, just post your questions below and I'll get back to you with the answers. But for now, I say thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, I say bye.